If you want to know how to make a modern video game soundtrack by only using free instruments and sounds, stick around, because this video is going to show you how to make this track from the very beginning, including all kinds of techniques you can be applying yourself. If you do need some free instruments, check out the card on the top right. Hey everyone, Jake from Transverse Audio here. This will show you my process on making a soundtrack from scratch. Let's start this track with some percussion. To get a more crunchy kick, I can play another one in a lower octave from the same sample. It's important to offset transients like this, so there won't be any phasing issues. If you do make an offset, remember to trim off the end so it will loop properly too. To liven up the drums a bit, I'll add some subtle reverb to the snare and keep the decay time low for other elements. For the hats, adding some delay that rolls off quickly with it set to ping pong can really help move the rhythm and make it interesting as it bounces between left and right. It's a good idea to adjust the mixer levels as you go because it is in this moment that you have the vision of how you want it to sound. You may forget about it later. If there is some space at the beginning of the pattern and you want to duplicate it over, Right click and drag out a loop section on the bar counter and copy and paste. This will keep the proper spacing at the beginning. A good way to make subtle effects throughout your drum loops is by sweeping a light sound by changing velocity and panning to keep it moving. Adding some reverb to this will help it sit even further back in the mix, making it more ambient. To make those epic movie trailer horns, you can take a rough synth patch and drown it in reverb. You'll see me using a lot of reverb in the soundtrack, but it's important to keep a balance of sounds that do and do not use this effect, or a low amount of it, at the very least. Putting this on absolutely everything can destroy the dynamics. I'm also going to tune the hats a bit to sound better with what we have so far. Now for a leading instrument. Adding some light distortion to a pad can give it an electric guitar feel while maintaining its synthy sound. It's important to use this effect with subtlety, as using too much of it can actually make your music sound like it's lower quality, and not the good kind either. As a final touch, I'm going to throw on some compression to lower the crispiness of the high end that the distortion created, and to boost the low end a bit more. Let's add some sound effects and use pitch shifting to make it less repetitive. Some reverb to make it less present, and aside from that, we can add some delay with the time set to a really low value to give it a robotic vibe. Again, I'm going to use the velocity to guide the effect and keep it moving. Now that this is actually getting somewhere, we can start to move each channel into its own pattern to give us more control over how it can be arranged in the playlist. After making an automation clip, I will copy the value of the end before moving it so I can quickly return it to its original after moving it. I typically set the automation with a bit more room before and after the sound so it doesn't jump to a different value while the sound is being played. It's also good to return the volume to where it began after the sound is dropped in volume. For some quick EQ, I'm going to locate a part of the frequency spectrum that is making the sound a bit off and drop that. Also finding the part I liked about the sound and boosting that slightly. If you want to take it a step further, you can automate the frequency a band is at so it has more movement. Now for some transition effects. I'll be adding in a longer build up later, so I just want to get a quick riser and impact to increase the excitement right at the drop. Since I cut the original riser short, I'll just add some reverb to make the ending less abrupt. I'll be going with a brighter sound for the bass line, as there is already some elements with a heavy bass. I also like how this sounds in higher octaves, so I'll just use it for a leading element as well. And duplicate the plugin so I can use different effects with it. To make things more interesting, we can take this pattern and duplicate it, then make both of the copied patterns unique by right clicking. This will let you change everything around without affecting the original. Each note on a keyboard is 100 cents, or one semitone. Changing it in the plugin wrapper will let you see the sense in the top right corner of FL Studio. So just copy the value from here and paste it into your automation clip. 
Some plugins come with a pitch bend parameter, which will throw your numbers way off if it's not set to the exact value of the plugin wrapper. So make sure you check that before you go and create automation points. Knowing this, we can easily determine the exact note we want to slide to. So everything stays in key and it can lead into the next note in the pattern. For the intro, I'll add a siren I made in Silent, but you can use any riser you like. I want things to move fast, so I'll trim the beginning a bit. I'm actually surprised how well that actually turned out. With the foundation down, let's add a pad to set up some inspiration to move forward with. To give this a bit of movement, I'm going to add a course and phaser effect and drop the LFO rate down on both so it's less obvious and simply add some progression to the sound. For a supporting element, I'll use an electric piano and add some distortion on it so it can have a bit of grit as it is quite gentle and I want to keep it consistent with the rest of the track. Throwing a chorus effect on top of it can really bring out the distortion characteristics without having to completely crush the sound. It's good to add a bit of variation throughout your track so things aren't too monotonous. An alternative to the pitch bending I've shown you already, you can use the legato setting in your synth and increase the glide to make it smoother. I thought I'd show you both as some plugins don't come with this and samples obviously don't either. Since I've layered two different kick drums together, I'm going to do some pretty aggressive EQ to try and mold them into one. Right off the bat, I could see it lacking frequency in the 5 to 700 hertz range. So I'll cut out a large part of that as it's not a dominant element in that kick. To make room for the bass sounds, I can trim the low end off of both kicks as they are better suited to bring some punch into the track, rather than bass. Just move it until you start to hear a difference, and then ease back a bit. To clean up the low or high end with pass filters, it's important not to change the sound, but to get rid of the sounds you don't hear. And some elements, you might find it better to not roll off the high end at all. It's very important to EQ things that are played at the same time in a mix together too. This way you can compare where everything is cut and boosted, and what parts of the spectrum are present. You don't need every EQ up on the screen either, or even visual EQs for that matter. All you really need to do is to be mindful of what values are applied to each sound, and how they might interact with the rest of the mix at any given moment throughout the track. As some final touches, rearranging the track to give it some more progression and better fit your vision is a good way to go. After playing the song through, you might find certain parts aren't as loud as the rest because of the octave they're in. Don't be scared to apply a crazy amount of gain boost during those parts. As long as it's not clipping or above 0 dB, you should be good. Let me know in the comments below for what kind of track or any video that you want me to make next. Subscribe and ring the notification bell to get a heads up whenever I release a new video if you like the content. As always, thanks for watching.